All right, well, I'll uh, take this opportunity to uh, have another podcast here from our, our good friend Andy. Basically, the reason we couldn't have a union meeting today is uh, due to the constraints of the county council and the COVID-19. We could only have 25 members into the hall at this time. We have more elected and appointed, so we wouldn't be able to get the all-important membership in here. So we've decided to do this podcast. Uh, and like I said, it just wouldn't be just. So what I'm going to do to start off now, I'm going to turn it over to the vice president who's been handling a lot of your questions. He's going to put out some information. Then I'm going to have Andy ask me some questions sent from you, the membership, and we'll go from there. Good afternoon, everybody out there. First, I'd like to thank the people that are in the plants working, uh, trying to do the best they can to care of the McClellan people and some of our other uh, trades and so forth. People are trying to make this plant safe for all of its return and hopefully uh, in the very new future uh, that we will all be back to work in a, in a safe and uh, healthy manner. But anyway, like Rick says, uh, very unfortunate we have it. couldn't have a new meeting today with kind of the restraints. Uh, we tried to do the best we could with the chairs. We could only get about six, like Rick said, about 60 some people here. Anyway, uh, I know this is uh, trying times for all of us. Uncharted waters for all of us. We've never been involved in this. Um, you know, with the benefits coming in unemployment, and uh, we have a lot of overpayment issues. I know it affects all of you. We're working back very hard with Detroit International Union, the corporation, on these overpayments. And hopefully we can get a lot of this resolved. Uh, we have overpayments with the state of Indiana. We have overpayments with uh, sick leave issues. We are working with people and, and trying to get a lot of this resolved and make it uh, as easy for everybody. I know there's still a lot of answered questions out there because, believe me, uh, people, uh, it changes by the day and sometimes by the hour. Uh, we're trying to keep a handle on this the best we can. And uh, I know. Uh, so hopefully we're all back to work here pretty soon. But anyway, still, if you got questions, we have people here. Uh, please call. We'll try to do the best we can. Uh, you know, on the sub, uh, a lot of you know, do the extra add-on sixteen six hundred dollars. Uh, that makes you not able for sub pay. Uh, but anyway, we're working hard to try to uh, do the best we can on the information we have, which changes every day. Uh, so. That's about all I have right now. I mean, uh, stay safe and uh, stay diligent, and uh, hope you and your families uh, is stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you. Well, Andy, you ready? Let's see what we can do. What should I do if I have concern about COVID nineteen health and safety protocols not being followed? Not using proper PPE, not maintaining social distancing, not maintaining a clean workstation or proper hygiene, what should I do? Well, as we get this business restarted, the uh, complete implementation of our health and the safety protocols are the most effective way that we can create a safe and secure working environment. In order per to uh, prevent the spread and transmission of the virus, it takes all of us to follow the safety measures that have been put in place on multiple points and multiple levels. I haven't been asked to return to work, uh, my work location yet. Can I come back into the building if I need to pick something up? Will my badge still work? Well, the answer to that is no. And the easy re reason is to monitor the safety and the distancing procedures again in the buildings. You know, we will not have access to their, your location advance of the your official return. Our goal again is safety. Return no a safe return for those who are needed on the site and an effectively transition others at the right time, keeping in mind the needs of the business, your functional leadership will determine the plan for you when you will be given your access to the building. Will FCA be providing any testing, including antibody testing, to employees for COVID-19 within the various facilities? Andy, and again, I've asked the company again as, as early or as late as this week, and that would be a possibility if we had members that wanted to take the test willingly on their own, would they do that? The answer was no, uh, not to be vicious. They just uh, 
they didn't really give me a, a reason. Uh, they will not be doing any uh, COVID-19 testing within our facilities at this time. However, uh, the FCA medical operations here in the U.S. has the ability to refer employees to specified testing sites. And again, I'm trying to get the company to do this. I'd love to do it every week to those that want to do it. And that we're not there yet. What if I have a serious underlying medical condition and I do not feel comfortable returning to work? We understand the employees who are at high risk for serious illness of the COVID-19. Uh, due to a long-term health problem and may be concerned about returning to the workplace. If you have concerns, you're encouraged to consult your personal medical health care provider before you return to work. You're also encouraged to reach out to the immediate supervisor or HRs, HRs to discuss your circumstances. How do I access the mobile phone app to complete the, the daily self-screening questionnaire? If I do not have a company-provided phone, how do I create a shortcut on my personal phone? Well, you know I can't tell, tell you how to do that on these fancy smartphones. However, I believe Andy's got a dark website. It's called a QR, I believe, and it, it's self-explanatory. And whoever set mine up, they did a good job for it because it worked for me for every day. But I can't explain it. It's way out of my deal. How is all this turmoil going to affect the proposed merger agreement with the PSA group? Is it still progressing, or is this something which could potentially be dropped, citing these unprecedented circumstances? Well, the merger with PSA is continuing at the same pace that it was prior to the pandemic crisis. The work stream teams are still hard at work and making progress, and there recently we heard that this could be uh, sealed around the middle of June. So the answer is yes. What is the guidance if a family member is asked to self-quarantine? Are we requiring the FCA employee to alert us and also self-quarantine? Uh, to ensure the health and well-being of our employees and limit the spread of the virus, employees are asked, and I, I mean get asked, to notify their supervisor if they have a family member who is, was asked to self-quarantine. If the employee is able to work Remotely, they should do show. They're unab unable to work from home. They should con contact their medical provider to guess, discuss whether working on site presents a health risk to others. Uh, in addition, you should notify your supervisor who will contact HR, and uh, that HR service center will call, and then they'll get back in, in touch with you. Employees who have spouses, family members who work in a high-risk area, such as hospitals, could be in contact with the virus. Should they be asked to work from home? As such, employees should contact their medical provider determined to determine if working on-site presents a health risk to others. Obviously, we can't work from home, so it should be uh, the information should be provided so we don't put others at risk. What should I do if I become ill due to coronavirus? If you become Ill, Ill with symptoms related to COVID-19 virus, please follow these steps. Call your personal physician or health care provider for medical instru instructions. Call the absence reporting line 1-800-810-2271 and report. The absent reporting line will transmute transfer you to the Sedgwick to file a disability claim. All right, last question. Given the current crisis, how is the attendance procedure being addressed for hourly employees who may be working on site? In all COVID-19 related cases, if the employee is sent home or requested to go home to self-quarantine, the absences will be non-counters in the attendance procedure encoded appropriately. Okay, I'd like to be, begin to close this out with everything we've been telling everybody at each meeting or whatever. It's all tentative, even today. 
I'd like to be able to, and, and the vice president as well, give you information on the overpayments and uh, just uh, whether what you're going to get sick pay if you go if you're quarantined. All of that has to go through the HR. Uh, we can't. We don't dictate that. We wish we could get it set in stone, but there are just too many uh, different angles that these things can come about. Uh, also, I want to remind everybody, which we are starting to come back, we got our team leaders in most of the plants this week. Next week, uh, phase two, I believe, and one shift at Tipton at the KTP, two shifts at the A speed, eight speed, and some nine speed and uh, block, possibly. And I believe the EVT is, is coming in as well for with, with just one shift. And again, that's all, you know, subject to change before tomorrow. And we'll try to get the information to you as fast as we can. I do want to address an issue with the duct work. Now that ITP1, I am, uh, received some information day, today on uh, they are working on trying to get the bigger drains in there. The tra our trades down there are taking care of that. Again, I appreciate everything for the membership, especially your patience. We're trying to make sure we get information out, but sometimes it, it just changes before we even get a chance to soak it in. Thank you again.